right? Exactly. It doesn't matter, again, whether we think they should be there or not. They've won the games that they've won so far. Yep. Uh, but this is the real challenge. If you want to be considered a part of the top four, you need to at least be able to make these matches against Sydney Drop Bears and a match against Order close. Yeah. That's it. It doesn't have to be necessarily a win. But if they just get 4 0 here by over the next two weeks, and I'm just going to say, well, this lineup there's from, a top three. Uh, from Mavericks, by the way, Jordan. Is this, do you think, on the back of what we saw Blank do last week, do you think that they've gone, hang on? This is how you beat them. This is their huh. kryptonite. Maybe, but the thing is, last week, Sydney Drop Bears didn't really change their compositions up too much. They pretty much ran standard codes, which you could say maybe is a failure to adapt. Now, looking Not at things, again, yeah. they have definitely adapted. They've changed the roster up. A Kraken's over onto Arna. You've got the two DPS players Ooh. on DPS, but it doesn't really matter what you're on when you're walking into rockets like that. So, Sydney Drop Bears, what is going on? They're like, hang on, hang on. We'll get back. We'll try this one again. We're going to change again. No, we're going to change back? All right. Just checking. Almost. Maybe they were hoping that... Uh, look, that is that is a point, right? If you're changing up uh, and Winter's kind of lurking there with the Farah, maybe you can take a look, a peek out through spawn on the Widow and find yourself a kill. Not going to be the case. Uh, Tidwat has gone down. And uh, they're trying to capture the point, but it's probably uh, not going to happen right now for the Drop Bears. Melbourne in a not a bad spot, though Haas has been doing quite a oh. bit of work. That's a very nice feeling when you're playing fire. If you get the direct hit rocket onto the Tracer, it just absolutely obliterates her. That's a very individualistic fight for Sydney Drop Bears. Doesn't seem like they've got uh, their mojo working just yet. Yeah. Melbourne Mavericks have been given almost the freest 50% I've ever seen here on Nepal. Sydney Drop Bears, though, are always a team that you can expect to come back. Gusto does get spotted. This could be dangerous, but none of those shots actually go on to him, so still going to harass them on the way. Oh, does he get that hack on a Tracer? Well, CKM will did. go down. Not before, though, CKM was able to pick up Winter. Fluro with the Valkyrie maybe picks up Winter. There we go. Melbourne back to full strength, and uh, they're going to win another fight right here. Be up to 80%. I mean, this is going to be the last fight available for Sydney Drop Bears right now. Huss almost has EMP, but Guzman may just shut the fight down before there's even an opportunity to start it for Sydney Drop Bears. A good EMP here, and the round is over. Ninety-five percent is where we are. The question is, can a rocket branch seal the deal? Finds one, yes. almost goes down. A Kraken's picked up. Show your to what all go down. A one hundred. To almost zero, I was getting really excited then. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's much of a muchness. It doesn't matter if it's 100 to seven or 100 to zero. But Melbourne come through. Look, Jordan, they saw what Blank did to the Drop Bears last week, and they're like, "Well, if you can do it, we're going to give it a pearl as well." Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was a bit sleepy, I thought, from Sydney Drop Bears. Obviously, Melbourne Mavericks win a, a couple of nice fights there, but by and large, the majority of that was just like senior drop bears trying to sort it out. You can see the importance of getting the first EMP down there, though. If Melbourne Mavericks wait for Hus to get EMP, that may well have been turned around, but the EMP goes out from Melbourne Mavericks, Rocket Barrage follows up, and then Sydney drop bears, well, when they get there, eventually get basically wrecked before the EMP even comes out. Like, the there was only one player left. I think it might have been Hus. Well, koalas do sleep like what 70 percent of the day or something absurd right so maybe they just hang on wait oh was it now okay and uh the freebie has gone across to the melbourne mavericks but this is their time to shine if they can follow it up with the goats v goats win here on sanctum that's a whole other story and that's the start that melbourne were looking for yeah this is not looking great for sydney drop bears at all is it already a strong start from melbourne mavericks a boot maybe here for fluoro doesn't quite connect on to it but 5v6, it should definitely be winnable for Melbourne Mavericks. They're just not pushing their advantage so much. And Winter's been dropped here. City Drop Bears are going to come back into this fight. Yeah, that was a little bit peculiar for sure. Maybe uh, that pick on to uh, on to Tidawat was, oddly enough, just a little bit too early oh. to make the most of it. See you later, Huss. Uh, well, the Drop Bears do manage to somehow grab that first fight. There you go. Only 100% yeah. to go. Melbourne Mavericks can go back and have a look at that one and figure out what happened because generally when you pick up the kill onto the main tank, that should be the fight yours. Mm. 
But now Sydney Drop Bears is back. The recontest here for Melbourne Mavericks. Look at what they have to play with, though. Yeah, that grab going to come through the sound bar and the self destructor just left in the middle of things. And, well, it was inevitable at that point. Definitely was. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's just Sydney Drop Bears. As soon as you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And already, this is just looking like so much different than what we saw on the first round. Where was Mini in all of that, by the way? Where was the, the shield, I guess? I'm sure. Was it already, must have probably been used. I'd have to, again, go back and look. They were a lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. See you later, Nami. Uh, look, uh, Mini finds one, but they need to find another on the back of this uh, Transcendence from Forbles. Husk goes down to Mini. The Primal Rage has popped. Melbourne have to win this fight, Jill. And they are actually winning the fight. Mini's done a lot of work. Trying to turn things around right now. Tita Watt very low. Can't oh, deal yeah, with Winter, who's got a, Rally. a bit of a stagger as well uh, coming out. Tita Watt doing, uh, doing what he can. Uh, able to get out just in the nick of time, obviously. Winston very beefy. Well, now it's on to Melbourne Mavericks. Like, they actually have got a pretty reasonable chance of holding this on for... A reasonable amount of time, you know, you've got the grab combo. See the drop don't have too much to deal with that unless Shoyo gets an ink. They're missing their tank and Mini is gonna take a little bit of a little while come oh, through. There and it is. See you later, Shoyo comes through. But Fluro but saves Fluro the day. does at least find Shoyo. A little bit of retribution there, I suppose. The capture though coming back across for the Sydney Drop Bears. Peter Watt's gone down somehow to four balls and uh, Mini make the most of this or not, that grab comes through and actually secures the fight win here for the Drop Bears. They're back on, back in their favour, and it's ticking away. Uh, if you're a Mavericks fan, you're probably hoping for perhaps just a little bit more out of that one. Yeah, I, well, obviously, if the grab hits, then you'd yeah. expect a lot more. But even after that, once Fluoro gets the boot, it was still a winnable situation for Melbourne Mavericks. Not the case now, it seems. Sydney Drop Bears have got everything they could want. Transcendence and Sound Barry used at about the same time as well here for the Mavericks. And now it's, uh, it's going to be tough for them to push back onto the point. They've lost one of their healers. Gusto is also low. Winter brings up Tita Watt, but a Kraken gets the DMAC. This grab is also available, so the overtime will tick through, but it's only a matter of time. Drop Bears will make it one and one here on call. We'll head to Village uh, to seal the deal. The question is, Mr. Elfish guy, does Village play out a little bit differently? Yes, it does, actually. DPS uh, a little bit more available. Yep, the, may even. The Skyline's a little bit, you know, a little bit easier in there. You're not trying to fly a plane inside a building. I think you can kind of see a little bit of everything on Village. Mm. So not prepared to say what we will end up seeing. I guess, judging on Melbourne Mavericks, what they were able to do on the first point, they probably want to go for DPS composition once again, which in turn is going to force Sydney Drop Bears off of their GOATS comp. Don't know that we'll see CKM on the far, although if we do, you would expect Burtlog to be playing Mercy, which doesn't seem to be the case right now. We shall see. Three, yeah. It's always too early to call before the teams actually run out of the spawn doors. There we go. There we go. Mm. It was going to be either CKM swaps off or Burtlock swaps on. But this is uh, peculiar. Would you rather have a Winston or a Wrecking Ball? I would. I mean, personally, I like Wrecking Ball. That's just a bias. Yeah, like I'd rather have the Winston, I suppose. So uh, let's see who comes out on top. CKM going to go down. Pass doing quite a lot of work, to be perfectly honest. And, uh, oh, keeping that's a good hack. The drop bears into this one. Fluoro does pick up Winter, but will get picked up by CKM in return. Pass doing even more work, doing huge amounts of work here on the Sombra. Getting that EMP ever close as well. To be fair, Gusto's pretty close, but it's Hutz who seems to be getting the picks. Yeah, onto the Wrecking Ball composition discussion, you actually would typically see the Wrecking Ball if he's a solo tank because he's a little more self-sufficient than the Winston is. But in this case, you've got Shoyo playing on D.Va. So that's why we've got the Winston here for Tita Watt. It's the Battle of the Airs. The Sky looking. Oh, our Kraken goes down just oh, as he bad. throws that one out. 
onto CKM. The Nano Boost coming through, but not really doing what it needs to do here, Elfish Guy. The City Drop Bears getting up to 30%. Melbourne will eventually bring it back, and now they're going to start stacking this ultimate charge. Going to be at six from six in just a moment. Yeah, EMP's up on both sides, however, so that could be the tell-all for the next fight, and that'd be fantastic for Sydney Drop Bears if they win it off the back of the EMP. Flip it across. Sure, Melbourne Mavericks still have their own, but getting a fight win off of one EMP and a little bit of a tick from it is fantastic. Looks like Looking for the go. EMP in the sky. Uh, needs to find the picks, and Winter goes down, so that's not bad. Haas willing to commit that for the one pick, and uh, it could be a pick that changes things up this fight. Looking like it might go across, at least now, to the Drop Bears. Melbourne, though, will use their own EMP coming out from Gusto. They need to follow it up with picks, and it uh, does look to me like they're going to get them. No, it does not. CKM having a bit too much of an impact. I mean, this is... This kind of feels like we've gone back to season one way. Like, it's so hard to actually tell what's going on because there's so many fights going on yes. at different parts of the map as opposed to with GOATs where there's just traditionally one fight. One right? fight. It's like football, follow the ball. This is like a bunch of mini skirmishes. Yeah. And at any given time, one of those may actually have the big play happening. How do we even know? We need like you 20 need a, You need to watch observers. a camera like this the whole time. Yeah. Definitely tough for now, though. The Sydney Drop Bears a little bit ahead. They've also got the point. Winter finds one, but we'll go down. Tita Watt gets four balls as well. This is like one for one trade. Back and forward. Oh, back and forward. Burtlock will pick a Kraken up, deciding they'd rather have a healer. You can see a Kraken, of course, has that ultimate available as well. Still, the tick's going in the Drop Bears' favour. The closer this gets to 100%, the more difficult it is. For Melbourne to bring it back and look, Jordan, this is about as close as you can get to winning a map against the Drop Bears. They may well win this map still. CKM does go low, but healed up straight away. Tito what trades out for the far, for the armor. Oh, pass again. Somehow comes through with the pick, doing huge amounts of work on the Sombra. That EMP available also. Nami very low. Uh, not going to get taken down for now. I think Nami just trying to stay out of things. Look at this damage going across all of the drop bears. They're all finding picks and still Haas has this EMP to, to lock in Nepal. May not even need it at this point, Ben. There's very few Melbourne Mavericks players alive. The point is still in the favour of Sydney drop bears. Not going to get there really to push that overtime any further. And Sydney drop bears do finish off Nepal. Mm. Two and one, I will say, that's not the cleanest I've ever seen Sydney drop bears play. No. Like, it was a bit all over the place. They obviously get there in the end. They're the better team on paper, yep. and they should get there in the end. But you would say that going into this match, that should be a lot cleaner. Yeah, I guess maybe it's just a matter of seeing them not forced off onto the mirror match, but very close to a, a mirror match, I suppose, and not playing uh, the cop necessarily that they wanted to play here. Uh, but I guess, a, as you kind of hinted at, right, if you assume that um, if you take six individual players for the drop bears and six individual players for the Melbourne Mavericks. Do the Drop Bears have the six better players? And if so, yeah. do you just copy what your opponents are playing over and over again well, and then beat them on, on raw skill? Not necessarily, because there is an element of having to be prepared and, and used to a composition like that, right? You, yeah. Just because you can say, okay, well, it's maybe a bit more of an individualistic composition than GOATS would be, there, you still need to be working together. You still need to be putting yourself in the right position. You mm. still need to be calling focus targets, et cetera, et cetera. So for Sydney Drop Bears, we actually haven't seen them play compositions like that all that much this no. season. Really what they've been doing is they've been trying to play GOATs as much as possible, and that's been working out for them. But now, if they're going to kind of keep swapping around, if they're going to try and quote-unquote catch up to this meta, because as we've seen, the variety actually is becoming a more so the meta than yeah. just GOAT's compositions at the moment. So it's, it's, it's actually quite entertaining. It's definitely something that Sydney Drop Bears need to have a look at and I think yeah. need to get a little bit more Agreed. comfortable with because right now they're not looking like their usual selves. Mm. But in a couple of weeks or even you know a week, I think given enough time, you know that the players on this roster have the skill to pull off compositions like that. It's just going to be once they feel comfortable with it. And here's the thing for me, Jordan, is if this had happened in playoffs, right? This is what we against spoke off in season three players were there going to be some pocket strats coming out to, to deal with this and if we had seen these strats like came out from blank last week come out in playoffs it could have been an entirely different story but because it came out in week five obviously time for the drop bears to adapt next we head to a blizzard world sydney drop bears oh, i think definitely looking uh the more comfortable of the two teams but i don't know if this had been week one and 
the Mavericks to come in and done that on Nepal week one of this season, I think we would, would be a little bit excited right now. Yeah, for sure. So anything is possible. And Melbourne certainly turning up today, but we need just a little bit more from them right now. I think if you see just a little bit more from Melbourne Mavericks, that's maybe where you expect to see Sydney Drop Bears lift as well. So perhaps isn't so easy. Looks like Sydney Drop Bears will go straight onto Standard Goats. They yep. haven't seen Guzto just yet. Well, now they have. Do you think they can? Do you think they can get him here? No. Surely not. Right. He's got translocate. All right. Yeah, but we've seen this before. Anyway, we're going to now come back out. Very traditional goat setup here for the drop bears. Gusto on the Sombra here for Melbourne. Forced to translocate out once again. Looking for charge, but only up to 23%. Drop bears, on the other hand, walk straight onto the first objective. And uh, they can keep Teeterwater alive. Potential for them to find themselves uh, a couple of ticks. No, falling back, healing up, waiting. And uh, this time has, of course, allowed Gusto to get ever closer to that EMP. Yeah, Shoyo goes very low, but Hustle X not to use the barrier on him. Still has it available, which is massive here. 87% though for Gusto. This will be the turning point for the fight. Yeah, and uh, Tusk does manage to find Gusto, but it's a big six-man EMP. The question is, can the Mavericks do something about it? Jerry's been d but I honestly probably would have thought that more damage could have gone down during Grab. that EMP Elfish guy. Grab available for Hussey, going to throw it out. And Nami caught inside of that. The sound barrier is good from Fluro. Is it going to be good enough to keep all of Melbourne Mavericks alive? At well, the moment, they've got the rally there as well. It looks like it should well be. City Drop Bears, they lost Tito Watt earlier on in that fight. If he would have survived, if the Transcendence would have kept him up, that could have been a very different fight. So that, that first fight went so long, Elfish guy. The, the Melbourne Mavericks managed to do a full rotation of all of their ultimates. Yep. In one fight. All of them got an ultimate and all of them used it. So, we look at that now. The Drop Bears in prime position. The Kraken about to hit 100% as will show you. Of course, CKM and Tidawat already have theirs available. You'd think, uh, the short of some miracle here from Melbourne Mavericks, this should go drop bears favor well with mini being that low there's absolutely no chance the shadow goes down as well from teeter and it is actually a massive shadow as well so as you said ben there's there's really no chance here for melbourne mavericks what's well, kind of the inevitable result right mm. if it takes if you get enough charge to come through full circle for the defending side and you do use absolutely everything you've got then you leave your opponents in prime position. It's going to prompt the change, though, from Melbourne Mavericks here. Moving on to the defense of Phase B. We'll have Winter on to Farah, Nami on to Sombra. Mini goes over on to Winston. A lot of verticality for him here on this part of the map. But I'm a little surprised to see that change up occurring for Melbourne Mavericks. Maybe they're not feeling too confident in the Goats v Goats matchup. Yeah, potentially. Certainly for me, the, the interesting change to see it. Yeah, you probably hinted this before, but it's Nami on the Sombra and Gusto on the Diva, so changing that up as well. This fight going for quite a while, and it's going to be Mini who goes down first. Fauble's also quite low. The Drop Bear's looking very healthy, on the other hand. Look at this, Fauble's Gusto all low. They're doing what they can, but the payload does get a move on. It took a while. They bought yeah. a bit of time. I think if you're going to transforward like that, for Melbourne Mavericks, you probably need to be getting more of an impact out of that fight than they did. Now, you could probably make the argument that Balls wanted to swap off onto Ana anyway, but I don't know. Transcendence is such a powerful ultimate that I don't think it's worth throwing it away like that. So I'm not sure what the idea necessarily was for Melbourne Mavericks. I don't think they necessarily got as much out of it as they should have. City Drop Bears way. now once again sitting pretty with ulties. Melbourne catching back up. A shadow used by Watt. It hits Gusto. Gusto goes down. You see Winter does try and use that barrage. To be fair, gets quite a bit of value out of it. EMP from Nami. Nami translocates back oh. out. Doesn't work. Finds Watt. Huge plays. Winter finds Burtlog as well. And a fight I thought was going in the favour of the Drop Bears just manages to go back across. Yeah, pretty Melbourne critical Mavericks. EMP from Nami. And not to mention the fact that his translocator puts him in the perfect spot to hit Tito Watt in the back. Yeah. It kind of all worked out there for Melbourne Mavericks. The race came on to Winter as well. 
So, looking like a fairly decent hold so far here into phase B. They still need to hold off another two fights. Yeah. Not that much here for Melbourne Mavericks outside of that I primal think it's rage. actually going to be tough. But with uh, a nano boost, you know. Oh, that's oh, a big sleep. Oh, it is indeed. Can they follow up with the pick? You see Mini dive right into the thick of things, and you know that that primal rage is also available. Melbourne Mavericks will fall back. The Sydney Drop Bears, they've been forced to hide inside as well, Jordan. Show you're going to be looking oh. potentially. <laughs> Another slip comes through. Winter lurking, just wanting that last couple of percent. There you go to the barrage. Going to be saved there potentially by a Kraken and that transcendence. It was a nano boost to Rocket Barrage as well, so potential for serious oh. damage. But nevertheless, it's actually the Sydney Drop Bears who finds the pick back onto the payload. They're moving again. Yeah, Primal Rage here for Mini. I'm not sure where exactly he is. He'll probably be able to get the recontest on this point, but whether the rest of the players are going to be able to get there in time to make a difference, that is the real question. Not even on the point? Well, he, if he was on the point, he'd die. Or something? I think he got booped off, but even if he was on the point, then the, the Dead Eye was going to kill him anyway. Well, there you go. There you go. So, two minutes on the clock. Actually, not a bucket load of time in the time bank here, Jordan. No. Definitely defendable here from Melbourne, considering how that started. And I guess, even though it feels like maybe the first, like the first fight went their way, but eventually, obviously, Objective A did not. They wasted a lot of time, and that's, you know, coming out and, and paying dividends now that we get into the third and final phase heading towards Objective C. Tito up with the Primal Rage. Mini's already gone down as well. The Drop Bears looking for their time to shine, trying to make the most of this payload phase and get this moving again. You can see that it is currently moving unhindered. Eventually, the Melbourne Mavericks will be able to stop it, but uh, they get a bit of value out of this one. 110 on the clock, pushing forward once more. A crack to show you with ultimates. See the Drop Bears with a little bit more value to be had. Interested to see how this Wrecking Ball is going to work out. It's a nice avenue for him to find some pile drivers here, but I'm not so sure it's going to be much more useful than a Reinhardt would. And he may be swapping off here. He is going to go to the Winston, in fact. Well, this is going to need to be a big EMP out from Nami. Outside from that, there is absolutely nothing for Melbourne Mavericks to work with, but he still doesn't really have that EMP. Well, there's the grab, the self-destruct available as well. The self-destruct on the wrong side of the pillar. That's not what you want to Five see. Man, but it doesn't hit Burtlock. The sound barrier goes down, so it really doesn't matter. Sydney wow. Drop Bears are going to push on through. They'll probably tap time available to them here as well. I think they would knock it over here in the next 22 seconds. We might just get a touch, but will not. Oh, well. Hmm. Look, if we take a look at the remaining time bank, 20 seconds is actually not that much. It's not. I mean, it goes up to a minute if we get to uh, the time banks, but yeah, you're right. It's really one fight. That's all that it is. Yeah. So look, if we bring this back, if the Mavericks have a good start, Objective A goes their way, they get some movement on the payload, they get some early wins. Yeah, maybe they lose a fight or two. Just theory crafting the whole map out here, John. But yep. the point is, right, that we have seen many teams come through Blizzard World with a much better time than that. So, oh, for sure. And I think, again, a lot of that goes down to, even though some of the fights did not go Melbourne's way, they bought a lot of time, time and time again. They actually bought quite a lot of time through each phase of this map. So I think overall it's not a bad result for them. They just need to follow it up. Uh, with that attacking phase, which I think is kind of th the much harder part, right? Well, they are going to be going on to attack with uh, the DPS composition. And we Ooh. saw that work against Sydney Drop Bears quite a bit last week. We've also seen how it plays out on point A of Blizzard World. You know, you, it's likely that actually Sydney Drop Bears are going to hide in one of the rooms, either on the left or the right of the point, and then only really contest when they have to. But it doesn't feel like a very easy point to defend Goats up against a composition like what Melbourne Mavericks are running right now. No, I don't disagree, Jordan. I do not disagree. Well, this is an opportunity potentially for Melbourne to even it up one apiece heading into half time. But to do it, you're going to need to find this first point nice and quick. So before what happens when you come out with the Farah, everyone sort of hides off. 
either in the second phase or in a room or something like this. But now, as they're forced them to the point to try and contest, the question is, can Winter do the damage that we need to see from this Farah? For now, doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. That's a bad place to get demect. Yeah, that's true. The very least is one. being traded. Winter's still alive, but somehow only just eventually will go down. So not often you see the Breek take out the firearm, but that's what's going to happen. And the Drop Bears will chase them down. Costly first fight potentially here for Melbourne on attack. Yeah, mission un unsuccessful to begin with. Still, it's bought 60% of the EMP built for Melbourne Mavericks. So it's not like they've achieved nothing. Once again, as I said, Sydney Drop Bears are going to play from the inside. We'll give a lot of positioning to Melbourne Mavericks initially. And to come out from there with a Rocket Barrage available is going to be difficult. Good contest here, though, from Shoyo. Winter's low. Oh, we saw it in the last game as well, how you can use that Diva. And again, CKM says, hang on. No one else can get rid of Winter. Well, I guess I'm going to be the one to do it. Drop Bears somehow come out on top again and do so with three ultis in the bank. Almost four, almost five. Yeah, somehow Shoyo doesn't even go down there. Obviously, he uses the self-destructor re-mech. But I would have thought he would have gone down, actually, in the mech animation underneath the rocket barrage. But doesn't seem to be the case. And now Sydney Drop Bears, they've established themselves really solidly on this defense. We're starting to see the swap-offs come from Melbourne Mavericks. This is now becoming dire straits for the attacking side. Gusto does have EMP, though, which is going to be enough to turn it around. They're going to need something here, Elfish Guy. Because right now, things are not going in Melbourne's favour. Hus lurking. Oh, it's going to be the Primal Rage, actually, that goes out first. Gusto throws out the EMP. Uh, did it hit anyone? It must have got cancelled there yeah, by CKM. I think so. That is not what they wanted to see. It's just funny for us, I think, Jordan, where a couple of weeks ago, we hardly saw any of these camps coming out. Uh, but this time around, we've seen a few. Mini, though, will find two picks. Needs to follow it up with more. Potential for it just to be a Reinhardt getting slowed down, not being able to find their way through onto the point. But Shogo goes down. Melbourne finally, with one minute on the clock, look to capture Objective A. Yeah, it almost felt as though Sydney Drop Bears could recontest there with the two support ultimates, but there wasn't really anyone in a position to do so outside of a Kraken and Burtlog, so it's really not enough to commit. And Sydney Drop Bears think better of it. Now they're going to go for an aggressive hold by the gate. Why not? They know that they can win this fight fairly comfortably. Just build an advantage heading into Phase B and take away some of that time bank that Melbourne Mavericks have built up. Yeah, going to try and fight this out as far forward as possible. Gusto with the EMP available, but the transcendence from a crack and comes out just a smidge earlier. Mini follows up. Burtlock got hit by the shatter. shatter. And this is very big plays coming out from Melbourne. This should allow them to get the payload moving eventually. And uh, with still a little bit of time left on the clock. And still with the cut of ultimates in the bank. Hmm. Well, I don't think it's worked out too badly for Sydney Drop Bears in all honesty. It has actually put Melbourne Mavericks in a really weird position economically using the EMP and the sound barrier. Mm. Sydney Drop Bears buy themselves time. It was about a minute actually that Melbourne Mavericks lost there. Drop Bears looking for the high ground here. The grab available for Nami. Going to drop on off, but it's Fluro who goes down first to half. That's not a bad pick at all. Looking to find another one. No ultimates being thrown out here, I guess. At this point, Melbourne need to fall back. Which they will do. But again, Jordan, two minutes now on the clock. Drop Bears get a little bit closer to getting their ultimates up. They can get some positioning that they probably didn't have before. Gusto looking for another good EMP. At least he doesn't go down in the previous fight. Well, Need to get some charge. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's probably not going to come out to start the fight. Like, it can maybe turn the fight around. But Grav is used in early from Sydney Drop Bears. Gusto... <laughs> Somehow goes down to show you, and that self destruct. Who even knows? Grav and Sound Barrier both used also. Melbourne looking to follow this up with some damage. It's actually Mini doing uh, big, big amounts of damage through here on the Reinhardt. 
but that payload needs to get going. Someone has gone back, picked it up. They'll get it moving once again, looking for maybe one more fight here yeah, that's on phase B. Why you, that's why you ideally want to use the transcendence against the Graviton Surge as opposed to the sound barrier, because it does give you a lot more sustain through the fight. Sound barrier just doesn't really provide enough shielding. Still, it means sound barrier, oh sorry, self-destruct. You know what? Transcendence is available here for Sydney Drop Bears on this defense. Third time's the charm, Elfish guy. Tino what? That is huge! Captures out half of the Melbourne team as well with that Earth Shatter. Looks to follow it up with a couple of hammer swings. And now time is running out. Melbourne gonna have one more fight. They're gonna have two support ultimates and a shatter. Theoretically, it should be enough to get them through, Jordan. Well, Transcendence from a Kraken may be able to turn things around. However, there is one out for Four Balls as well, so we're in a bit of a, the eye of the storm, perhaps. Mini Not with blocked. an Earth Shatter finds DKM and Tidawat. Both of those crucial players to find. The grab from Huff, the sound barrier from Fluro, but Nami's got one as well. Looking to throw out one final Graviton surge. Nami's found a pick onto Huff as well. Tidawat's gone down. Mini finds Shoyo, and Melbourne going to put more time on the clock. Uh, yeah, they are. Sydney Drop Bears, like you said, they didn't really have enough to kind of contest that with. It had to come from the Transcendence if anything was going to happen. But Melbourne Mavericks have negotiated that one quite nicely. With only a minute 15, though, they are going to have to have a stellar phase C of the map here. It's uh, looking difficult, obviously, because it does still give enough time for Sydney Drop Bears to build the ults up. EMP for Guzto will win them one fight, Melbourne Mavericks, would, you would assume. Almost. But there still needs to be at least another fight one here for Melbourne Mavericks. And that second fight will be the one where City Drop Bears really can actually come back in with the support ultimate well, and Earth Shatter. Well, the EMP comes through, but not before Winter does go down. This time, Melbourne will be able to follow up with a ton of damage. We've seen them kind of struggle to follow up the EMPs before. This time, that will not be the case. And a clean wipe coming out from Melbourne. Is the clean wipe worth it? Did you want to do some staggers? I don't know. Definitely well, puts the drop bears now in a good spot for one last fight, and one last fight with 20 seconds on the clock. In the ideal world, you would have actually had EMP in this fight, but yes. now Sydney drop bears coming up on their own ultimates. It's starting to turn the tables a little bit. Entirely winnable right here, right now for Sydney drop bears. 10 seconds on the clock, but Melbourne nice a boots. long way from being able to get the drop goal through. Good 60 meters out. The grab's Jesus. going to get caught as well. Nami with big, uh, with big miss really. Show you with the big play, should I say? Mini with an earth shadow, looking to follow it up. Tita Watt down. Mini down. No Reinhardt's available. Everyone's stuck on top of the payload. But the drop bears follow through with damage, and the drop bears are going to make it 2-0 oh, heading into half time. They certainly are. It, again, it took a little while, right? It's another fairly close map there. Yes. Obviously, Sydney drop bears don't close it out with a lot of time left in their time bank. And then Sydney Drop Bears also allow Melbourne Mavericks to get fairly close. But it kind of always felt like Melbourne Mavericks was fighting from behind, which I didn't necessarily get the sense of on Nepal. So maybe we're starting to see this shift in the series. Maybe Sydney Drop Bears starting to slowly work their way in here. Yeah. And it's getting more and more difficult for Melbourne Mavericks, as obviously the school will represent with a 2-0 now. It's really almost unprecedented that we see a reverse sweep go against the Sydney Drop Bears. Yeah, well, we certainly don't see many of those, that is for sure, Jordan. Uh, but I still think this Mavericks lineup is actually showing us quite a bit today. It just uh, 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 quite a bit is unfortunately for them at the moment not enough. And to be fair, that was to be expected. And I also kind of feel like maybe the, the Drop Bears are handling this DPS lineup a little bit better than they did last week, as we saw last week. Like, they went minutes without making changes that they eventually needed to make anyway. Perhaps that is the case, but the job is being done at least this time by Sydney Drop mm. Bears. So I think that's really what matters at the end of the day, right? You obviously want to see them kind of working these compositions around a little bit yeah. when we get into the more difficult matchups for them. But on paper, this one should actually be a pretty straightforward matchup for, for Sydney Drop Bears, I think. Uh, I think, yeah, you're, it's, you are right. Yeah. Sometimes you want to say, okay, practice how you play, but maybe you want to just have a bit of a cruisy week here for Sydney Drop Bears and then focus on it when you come into Prac. Well, it's week six, day one. One match is done and dusted. This is half time for match number two, but we will be back after this very quick break. <laughs> 